Hello everyone, welcome back to Rachel's Studio and in today's tutorial we're going to explore yet another black cat it, with the wet and wet technique and in this painting I'm going to use some Sumi ink and some black watercolor paint and right here I'm just working on uh, getting my masking done and as usual I use an old rigger I get it wet scrub it in soap and then dip it in the soap and I'm just carefully putting in some whiskers and these whiskers actually came out really great and I got a really good arc and I think a lot of that is muscle memory and just practicing a lot so just practice your whiskers a lot you might even want to do a little exercise when you're bored of just painting arcs of whiskers on a blank piece of paper just to practice you don't even have to do it with masking of course you could just do it with paint but that's a good way to uh, get that muscle memory going so you paint better and better whiskers and i'm putting in a couple uh, eye glints and a few whiskers above her ears i've stopped adding paint to my masking because with the one painting that i did of the gray calico cat my masking didn't come up very well because i got those whiskers really thin and it just didn't work that great so i've kind of shied away from painting uh, putting paint in my masking but you can do that if you really feel like you can't see your masking there are masking products on the market that have coloring in them so you could try those I'm using a soft magic no not soft magic it's just a regular art eraser i'm thinking i need to just bite the bullet and get a kneaded eraser i'd like to show you guys that with kneaded erasers you kind of dot at the pencil instead of scrubbing it and it just it's especially good for delicate papers especially this fluid watercolor paper which i forgot to tell you guys this is fluid watercolor paper about 16 by 16 inches per uh, agnes bador aka bedorka on skillshare uh, per her advice i'm painting larger but one new thing that i'm going to try with this painting is this sumi ink and it is so beautiful to watch spread out on these smoother papers like this fluid paper and uh, it's really fun to watch on uh, Yupo paper but it is not as erasable it's harder to work with it'll stain your brushes and um, really thick cream consistency Winsor & Newton paint will work just as well uh, for the most part but I was just playing with the Sumi ink but if you don't have Sumi ink do not worry about it just use some uh, lamp black paint that you probably have if you've been following my tutorials or really any black is fine to practice these techniques I think I'm coming to the conclusion that better than any other paint better than the Sumi better than um, the ivory black I've been trying out blacks um, just to see if any of them are better than the lamp black and really the lamp black really has that fur texture effect uh, on wet really wet paper more so than I think other paints do so um, I if you have lamp black that will work you just really need to get it as thick cream consistency as you possibly can and get a lot of it pre-mixed before you start painting because you'll need a lot of it <laughs> and uh, so right here i'm putting clear water and i'm putting the clear water completely over all the boundaries where i want the soft fur effects be careful not to do that say around the ears or across the eyes you want to leave your eyes perfectly dry you want to leave the background behind the ears perfectly dry because you don't want your ears to fuzz out that won't look right so remember just get the inside of the ears wet but leave you can see too fortunately with this footage you can see where my paper is wet especially around the cat's right our left ear you can totally see that the paper is dry behind the highest arc part of the ear and then i've made it wet across the boundaries pretty much everywhere else across the cat uh, the boundary between the cat's left our right face side the thinner part of the face that's kind of further away from us 
I'm gonna let that dry more than the other areas because I do want that to be pretty controlled, but I want it a little soft. So you can have more wet edges where you want the fur to fur out more and uh, let the paper be drier, like uh, mop it up, say, with a paper towel across the boundaries where you want it to be soft, but not totally furring out, blooming really soft, like the top of her head and that side of her face on the right side of the painting, her left, the right side of the painting. Um, that needs to be uh, a little damp, but definitely not really wet. And the trick to this painting style is letting your paper dry a little bit past the glistening stage. You do not want it completely glistening. You want it, I don't know, say four or five minutes after you've gotten it nice and glistening, not puddling, but glistening. If you have not seen my video of the Calico Cat where I talk a lot about paper stages of dryness, wet, uh, like not wet, uh, glistening, well there's puddling, which you rarely ever, ever want. There's glistening where it's got a very glossy sheen on it buckling where your paper starts to buckle where actually my paper looks like it's buckling too. this fluid um, buckles more than most papers you're going to work with by the way you can totally do this with arsh cold press do not feel like you have to buy all these papers that i'm trying i'm trying all these papers so you guys don't have to and by the way do you see how applying paint right here uh almost like a, a perpendicular angle to her side don't do that uh, this is still early in my experimental game where I hadn't realized what you want to do is you want to run the brush all the way down her side. Instead of flicking out towards the background at a 90 degree angle to the background, if you would like to paint with me in real time, my tutorials come complete with downloadable reference photos and line drawings. Join me on Patreon where you can paint and learn with me in nitty gritty detail how to paint in this and several other styles. You'll gain instant access to my library of tutorials and depending on what tier level you choose, you can get paint dots mailed to you, critiques of your work, and even originals mailed quarterly. The paint will fur out without you having to flick it out towards the background and that's what I was thinking there and then I got these it just doesn't look right uh, it works better if you just if I for example if I put the brush down underneath her ear and just glided it along the edge straight down never lifting it up until I get to the bottom of the edge uh, down by her feet that would work better because the paint will fur out anyway and then you don't get those weird little tufts that are sticking out that just don't look like cat fur. <laughs> that doesn't look right. I am gonna fix it later. This is actually one of my favorite experiments, the way it turned out. And most of that's because I decided to go in a second time and fix my mistakes. Uh, you see how I left a white highlight along the middle and the inside of her legs? You can do that by just not painting at all. And uh, I think I should have put more water and joined those areas a little. They looked too, a little bit too racing stripe. It didn't look quite right, but I still love and accept myself. <laughs> uh, this is very experimental. I'm not doing these for customers or anything. So I don't really care if they get messed up. So there are some odd things that happen in these paintings because um, they're totally experimental. And I wasn't exactly being careful with anything else in the painting other than trying to get the fur right. So the Sumi ink, you can see how much it furs out and it is beautiful. And the thing with the Sumi ink is it stays a lot darker. It doesn't have as much of a drying shift, but it's not as erasable. All right, and you just wanna to try to paint as fast as possible when your paper is at just the right amount of wetness between somewhere between the glistening and the buckling stage. Sorry, that's about as uh, accurate as I can tell you. You really do have to put your miles on the brush for these techniques. Practice, practice, practice. I mean, look, I've been painting 20 years and this cat here is probably like my 20th attempt at this 
technique and I'm still not, I would not call myself a master. I mean, it takes years to learn these techniques. So good on you for try, even trying. Good on me for even trying, right? <laughs> um, don't be too hard on yourself and don't be too hard on your paintings and just enjoy it because it really is fun to watch them fur out and it's fun to even get a, a spot in the painting that you really fall in love with, which has happened a lot to me. There's a lot of different um, paintings that I've created where parts of them, I just love them. Just don't love the whole thing. All right, so you can see how fast my paper dried, so I had to kind of re-wet that ear. And if water drips down into the cat's body, to me with this technique, it's kind of the spirit of this painting technique is loose and a little uncontrolled with blooms that might be a little bit out of place. Uh, the blooms themselves add beautiful fur effects and you can just let it happen. There I sopped up that puddle a little bit in her lower ear area, upper forehead area. Here I'm using kind of a dry brush technique. It's dry in the background there and I'm just uh, getting some fur textures out by using a light stroke with the tip of my brush. And I painted carefully around those eyes because I'll go in later if I decide I want to finish this painting, which I do decide to finish it. So um, this painting took place over about two weeks. I did this first stage that you're watching here and then later after I'd done a lot of other paintings and decided what was my favorite. I decided to finish this one. I can't finish all of them. It would be too much time, but I thought this one deserved finishing and ended up as probably the, one of the best ones. Still not where I want it to be, but anyway, so the paper is still wet. So as long as your paper is still wet, you can go in and darken places. Ref I was trying to refine her nose. I still wasn't happy with her nose. I lost the nose in the drawing and it just, ended up having to be reworked several times before I was happy with it. And, um, and some of this area around her face, I painted with watercolor paint. And so it was really reworkable later. So anywhere you think you might want to rework an area, just know if you use the Sumi ink, it's not as reworkable as watercolor paint. I'm using Winsor & Newton Lamp Black, and I'm using my Silver Black Velvet brushes. Just getting her face a little darker while the paint is still moist. And remember, of course, if you don't want cauliflowers, you just have to go into these more wet areas with or these buckling stage, because now it's definitely entering the buckling stage. So if you go in with water, a watery brush, it'll create a cauliflower, which can be good because we like cauliflowers in this painting style. But in her face, I didn't want any cauliflowers. So you've got to really use cream consistency paint in those areas. And here I went off camera. So I was just basically painting dark paint around her paws and keeping the, um, the main paws a little bit lighter and painting negatively around the paws is kind of how I created the shapes. And I did not spend a lot of time on her paws because that was not what this painting was about. This painting was about experimenting with the fur, along, especially al along the bottom half of her body and the left side of the painting fur. That was the point. So my paws are still pretty simple and archaic looking. <laughs> but I really will go in later and really finish off the eyes, refine the whiskers, and keep that part of her, the painting kind of way more refined, but I never did finish the paws. I'm not a big fan of painting paws. I don't think the main area of interest will be on the paws. So you finish your paws off as much as you want. I just did the bare minimum of painting negatively around them to hint at the shape of them in general and a few paw crack toe toe cracks between each toe and i called it done okay so this is at this point i'm going to let everything dry so everything's perfectly dry now i went and had a coffee or whatever 
And now I don't like how there's blobs, chunks of fur coming out, especially on those lower hindquarters. So I'm re-wetting these areas and this ink, it seems to stay in place pretty well on this fluid paper. Every paper, paper reacts differently there. I'm getting a little bit of re-loosening and that's the thing with this fluid paper. It's a cellulose paper. paper. And when you paint with thick paint in the first layer, and then you go to re-wet it, especially with watercolor paint, it's gonna re-loosen and come up. It's not like Arsh Cold Press where you can work in layers. In these cellulose papers, you put down a layer and then you're pretty much done. But I think because I worked with ink and I was being really delicate, I was just, uh, you can even spray it instead of use a brush if you wanna rework it. Um, I wanted to get these sides better so I see how now I'm doing the way you're supposed to. Doing a straight line down over the whole haunch instead of flicking paint out towards the background and then it'll fur out. That's more the way you want to paint these edges. And remember when it, as you're experimenting experimenting, pay attention. When you like blot at the paper, use like a blot style brush stroke where you go dab and then it blooms out. Uh, notice how if instead you just take your brush and you draw a long line without lifting up your brush, how it doesn't bloom out, it kind of holds its shape where you painted it a lot better. So I was using that lesson that I had learned not to blob at it, but just do a long, see I did another long line along her hunch there, and then let it bloom out. And so that way you don't get those blob looking <laughs> uh, bunches of fur coming out that don't look like a cat's fur looks. So that is a lot better. And I did a better job of that at the, on the top half of the back of her neck, but the haunches had, had to be fixed. And then I'm moistening the paper out there. I feel like maybe if you put wet paint on the outside, like I'm doing here, it almost acts like a pump across the paper and draws the fur out some more. I think that's what happens. I don't know. I'm just experimenting with that to see if I kind of not touch the paint, but just the, the water on top of the paper away from the paint if I move that, will it create a little bit of tiny current that makes the fur fur out a little bit more because all the water is connected because it's all wet. So I don't know if you understand what I'm saying, but I, that's what I was trying to do there. I was kind of trying to play in the background, swishing the water, not puddling, but glistening water to see if I could get that fur to kind of draw out a little bit more. That was what I was attempting. All right, then you just let it dry again. The main thing that's bugging me in this painting is the racing stripes. I'll go in later and do a glaze over those so they're not pure white, but look how amazingly white it did stay. And that was all equally wet. So it's interesting how the paint kind of pushes and pulls and doesn't go into the white areas when you do a stripe like that. Good to know when you're painting tabbies. I've got my oval brush, so I'm gonna use a larger brush here. Silver black velvet oval three quarter, came in that set of three that I like to use. And you do, when you're painting, say on a 16 by 16, inch size paper like I am here, you want to use bigger brushes. So I've got my bigger brushes out and what happens is I get into my painting process and I forget and I just go back to old habits and use my silver black velvet size eight round. All right, so I wasn't really happy with this edge. I thought it was too stiff, but now that I look at it, I think it looks fine. I, I should have just left it because then it got overworked this edge um, on her left, our right side of the face. I should have just left that. It looks fine right now, but whatever. I was playing. I wasn't trying to get this to look right. I was playing with different techniques to see what happens. 
So sometimes you got to mess up a painting even. And um, then the top of her head got totally wonky with those big old triangles of, <laughs> I don't know what that is, but that's not what I wanted. So I was trying to erase that. But I think that's Sumi ink. It doesn't erase as well. At the end of this painting, I'll scrub it a little with a stiff scrubber. And the fluid paper actually took a little bit of stiff scrubbing a lot better than I thought it would. So I was able to do some scrubbing at the very end of this painting process in this second half, last half hour. All right, there's my scrubber. Oh, I'm gonna scrub at, at it now. Let's see how much it scrubs off. See, it's scrubbing off. It's just, you won't be able to rework that area, but I don't want any paint in that area anyway, so I don't need to rework it. So if I damage the paper a little bit, that's okay, because I'm not gonna put any black paint in that area above her head anyway. I'm not gonna put in any background, so if you scrub it and damage the paper, just know that you're done painting on that section of the paper, but at least it's not, it doesn't have these weird triangles of paint coming up. And then I'm going to darken that edge so it's the stain that's left behind is less obvious when I put some dark paint on the top of her head there. And just so you know, I do have a lion painting. For those of you that are not on Facebook, you will know everything that's happening in my life, if you're on my, my art life anyway, if you're on Facebook. But if you're not on Facebook, you do not know this, but everybody else does, that I've got a lion painting that's about three quarters done. It's coming. All right, here I'm just darkening the black around her eyes to help them pop out. Later, I'll reshape that eye that I'm working on now to make it a little smaller. And I'll continue to rework that eye. It'll actually, the eyes come out great in this painting. I was so happy with them at the very end. But you gotta watch the second half hour to see that. So, just note to you guys. <laughs> the eyes came out great. It's worth watching. And also, do you guys know that you can speed up these videos? You can click on the little YouTube icon, and it'll take you to YouTube, and then you'll be able to click on the gear icon at the bottom of the video and you can speed these up or slow them down. Of course, pause, rewind, fast forward, just like as if you were using an old VCR. So you can speed them up to one and a half times faster, two times faster. So I'll be a little bit more high pitched, but still quite listenable if you want to watch these faster, which is pretty cool. Okay, so I'm just using cream consistency paint on dry everything's dry and I'm just putting in some darker areas where it doesn't matter if the edges are hard getting everything darker if you see I as I narrate this I haven't been paying attention to where I'm dipping my brush so I'm pretty sure I'm using watercolor paint but if I dip my brush in my palette well that's black paint. If I dip my brush in the little circle, the tube plastic tube, little tiny container I have, oh, that's wet. Oh, it is still wet over there because look how much it bled. I had to dot it up. You got to babysit these as they dry. But um, if, I, if you see me dipping my brush into that little plastic container on my palette, that's not a part of my palette, that's where I'm keeping my Sumi ink. So if you ever wonder, what is she painting with right now? You can tell by where I dip my brush. I'm using Sumi ink and the black watercolor paint. Scrubbing that edge to soften it up a little bit. This is probably, like I said, this was one of my favorite cats. The pose is a problem, I think, because Unless you paint it really realistically, it might be hard to see that the picture was taken from a little bit below the cat, so it makes her look a little bit smushed down. <laughs> so this might not be the best reference photo because she's the picture was taken at a weird angle, which a lot of times makes for a more interesting painting. So don't shy away from that, but she looks kind of squat, a little bit too short. 
But the reason is, is because the picture was taken of her from down below. So it might work better to paint her from a more natural position, at least in a position of the photographer in a more natural um, eye to eye level picture, which is why I painted so many different poses of her too, because some of the poses just weren't translating well. They just looked weird. And this part of why this cat isn't exactly perfect the way I would like it to look is because she looks too short because the, but that's because the reference photo I chose. So the reference photo you choose is really important too. Just popping out a few little paws, painting on dry paper. If you ever wonder, am I, is she painting on dry paper or wet paper? You can tell because look how hard those edges are. And I'm just putting in a few little details in her paws and along the side of her paws to um, tell their story enough so that they look like paws. And there I keep getting bleeding up there on her cheek and I had to keep blotting at it. And then it started looking overworked, but oh well, that, that, that area probably got the most overworked of any area, but I will somewhat salvage it later by painting whiskers. And it really pulled everything together nicely. And then you don't even hardly notice the overworked area because the beautiful whiskers are kind of covering it up. So that will be coming too. And I'm using a scrubber here on dry paper. My scrubber has a little bit of water in it. And I'm just trying to fix her nose. And I just fix it, don't like it, do it over. Fix it, don't like it, do it over. But you know, if you use a scrubber too much, on this paper, it will become unworkable. All right, getting some burnt sienna, I am going to work on the table a little bit. I'm using my silver black velvet three quarter oval. I'm trying to remember to use my bigger brushes when I can think about it. It's not my habit. I'm not used to working in these larger formats. But I kept the table really simple. This painting is not about the simple and this painting is a little bit stylized with this technique in my opinion. So I wasn't trying to go for realism. I was just trying to tell the story of this cat is sitting on a table and you are looking at the cat from a little bit from below. So I was hoping that would help uh, the viewers. I understand this perspective a little better. I'm putting a little bit darker cream consistency, burnt sienna right under the cat to create a little bit more of a shadow. If you want to be more precise with your lines, you could put a little bit of tape along where the top edge of the table is so you get a nice straight line. That would look good. But I was not worried about making this a really finished, perfect painting. I was just playing. So I did want to add a little table there so she's not floating in space. And blotting that nose. Just going to play with reworking the nose, blotting it, scrubbing it a little, redoing it. <laughs> I redid the nose quite a bit. And what you can do is if you decide you want to lift out some of the nose, you just wait till everything's perfectly dry and then get a little bit of water on your scrubber or a, a synthetic stiffer type brush depending on what paper you're using, you definitely need a stiff scrubber on Arsh, but you could use a softer brush if you're working on this fluid paper because you don't want to damage the paper if you want to continue to be able to rework it. So I was very delicately touching it with the scrubber when I did use the scrubber and you just get it wet and you just kind of dab at the nose and lift out some highlights, um, blot at it with paper towel. If you feel like you need to get more up, 
And there I go in with the scrubber again, looking carefully at my reference photo. And you want to compare the length of the nose to another part of the cat's body, say another eye, one of the eyes. So you make sure the nose doesn't get too long. At one point my nose was way too long. Now I'm just going to toy with this painting and you may or may not. Now I'm going to toy with this painting and you may or may not want to watch all this. I'm just tinkering with it. If you want to see how I tinker and adjust, that's fine. Or you might want to skip ahead to the eyes, whatever you want to do. Um, but just to warn you, I'm just going to tinker and just darken some areas in here. I'm getting everything wet and where I used ink, I can be more kind of aggressive with the water because the Sumi ink doesn't lift up. It doesn't seem, uh, but if I was painting over watercolor paint here, it would be lifting up and I'd have to be much more delicate with glazing over this and putting another layer because typically this fluid paper doesn't allow for another layer especially if you worked with just the watercolor paint. But because this is Sumi ink that I'm painting water over, it doesn't seem to move much. So I can be a little bit more aggressive when I'm putting water in. And I just wanted to get this side of her face a little darker. So I'm just toying with it. Got my silver black velvet size eight round. I could probably definitely use a larger brush and I got some uh, this time I'm working with the lamp black Windsor Newton lamp black here I just wanted to darken that little spot there and I'm working on fairly wet paper you see how I wet it with clear water first I'm just tinkering about trying to fix little blobs that got sprinkled on the paper and if they're still wet you can just put a bunch of water on them and then blot up you don't want to blot up straight paint you want to add a bunch of water to it if it's still wet so you'll get more of the paint blotted up that way defining the ear a little bit by using my scrubber and lifting just a bit felt like the ear area needed a little bit more detail. Here I got some Sumi ink on my brush there. You can see that I dipped it in the Sumi ink and I'm just going to put some eyeliner in. Getting things a little bit more popped out. And later I'll go in and put some color in those eyes. Remember to clean your brushes out really well after you use the Sumi ink and you might even want to um, set aside a brush just for Sumi ink because it will get stained. So I'm just darkening the areas around the eyes and in the face with the Sumi ink. I'm not experienced with Sumi ink like I, like I said, so a lot of this painting was just kind of learning how Sumi ink works. Now I'm re-wetting the ear. I'm going to put a few more details in the ear. There I'm getting, actually that's not Sumi ink, that's just regular watercolor paint. That's my ivory black M. Graham that I've been playing with. I really like it. It has less of a drawing shift. Which means it doesn't, it stays dark even after it dries. And the lamp black really dries a lot lighter. Just putting in a little bit more of an ear hole there. I might have it in the wrong spot, whatever. <laughs> I'm not too worried about it, but I just was trying to put in a few more ear details. That's too low for the ear hole, but there was a dark spot on her face there, so I was just darkening it up. Next, I'm going to use this little tool that I created after seeing a comment on some YouTube video somewhere. This guy had talked about how he put masking in his brush and splayed it out like octopus legs and then put the masking in and kept adding masking and it was a great tool for creating grass textures and things like that. So I was curious to see how it would work to paint whiskers with it and little uh, flyaway furs coming out of um, random areas in the cat's body. So 
I was just playing with this brush and I think I liked how it created whiskers and I'm going to show you some footage. Uh, I didn't film it on this painting of me using this little tool that I've created to make these little uh, wispies and obviously you're not going to have this tool and what you could use a liner or a rigger script brush anything that has a really small point and kind of longer bristles any of those brushes are good for creating just little wispies and I just wanted to see if I could get a more interesting looking line with this like maybe thinner in parts and thicker in others and it did create an interesting effect so I'll let you be the judge but I was just playing with this which I'm usually am playing with toying with some idea or trying something new if you haven't figured it out yet I get bored quickly and don't like to do many things the same way twice <laughs> Uh, especially when I'm experimenting and just having fun with these paintings and trying new things. So here I was just basically starting to move into the jewelry stage, which is the stage of the painting where I'm refining everything and pulling everything together to make everything hang together nicely and putting in those little details, which I call the jewelry, to really make the painting shine. So here I'm just putting in little wispies and I'll also do the whiskers and because I didn't get this particular painting filmed while I was doing the whiskers I went and chose one of the many other paintings I have of Sadie and did the whiskers again so you can see how they look now I'm gonna work on the eyes I love how the eyes came out and I'm gonna just do my typical thing where I put in a bunch of clear water I painted carefully around the glints in the eyes, although I do have a little bit of masking in the, gl in the glints of the eyes, so you can either paint around the glints or use masking to create the glints in the eye, little white spots, little white highlights. And I'm going to make this a gradiated eye, which means at the top it's going to be darker, the middle it's going to be medium, and the bottom it's going to be lighter and almost always that formula works for creating really beautiful cat's eyes and so I'm floating in some Windsor Violet Windsor Violet Windsor Newton green gold paint now if you don't have green gold you can use Holbein Oriole and that would be fine or some quinacridone gold would work and then at the top of the eye I'm going to float in to this now moist eye so it all melts and merges together much like an eye does I'm going to drop in a bit of milk consistency burnt sienna there along the top using my silver black velvet size 8 round getting a little more green gold for the middle parts of the eye getting more burnt sienna and I'm just continuing to add paint until I'm happy with the difference in values from the top of the eye to the bottom the top top is darker the middle is medium values and the bottom is a light value getting the other eye wet with clear water just a little bit you definitely don't want it puddling because then you will lose control of these colors that you're putting in and the values and it'll all blend and merge together and be one flat color for the whole eye which is the last thing you want and even when my reference photo eye looks very flat as in the same color everywhere same value everywhere I almost always especially these days I've learned to use some artistic license and make sure that your eye isn't all one flat green color or all one flat yellow color with no changes in values and or color so here in the bottom you can see I'm kind of using my brush kind of like a sponge and picking up 
some of the color up out of the bottom, so that's something you can do too. You can paint the whole eye like a medium color and then lift out the color with a wrung out clean brush. As long as your paint is still wet, that should work. And then just add some darker value at the very top of the iris. Just kind of toying with that little edge, cleaning it up. I'm going to play around with my charcoal pencil here. And it ends up that the charcoal pencil was a lot lighter than the pastel, the white pastel pencil. So I ended up going with the pastel pe pencil. But here I'm adding some whiskers, just playing, seeing how it looks on this darker paint. Because when I was using these pencils on another painting that was a lot lighter, it just didn't show up hardly at all, which of course makes sense. You really need a darker background for these white pencils to show up. But I got this idea from a John Lovett tutorial, which I really enjoyed, and I really, um, I like how the fur and the ear came out using the, this charcoal white pencil. Here's my pastel pencil, and it's, it makes a little bit wider line, so I liked it better. But I'm almost getting too many whiskers now, and so I rub them out with my finger. That's the cool thing about these pastels and charcoal, too. You can just rub it out, soften it, blur it if you don't like it. So I'm going to add some more little furries into her ears here. Here I'm using my silver black velvet and using some dry brush techniques because this edge had gotten a little overworked so I was just trying to cover up some of the little um, overworked looking areas and just painting over all of it using some dry brush. So I'm painting on completely dry paper here and just using kind of the, the side of my brush instead of the tip to create a, a nicer looking cleaner edge there on that side of the face. Another thing with this side of the face, it's closer to the eyes, so it's okay to have a hard edge. I think it looks fine, and that's how the actual cat looks too. The rest of uh, Sadie looks really soft, but this part of her head has a bit of a harder edge because the furs on her face are a little shorter. So I thought dry brush technique looked fine for this area and gave it a little bit of definition. And that hard edge will draw the viewer's eye. All right, now I'm going to sign with my Funasuke Tombow calligraphy pen, which is what I've been using. I'm not done with this painting, but I'm thinking maybe I am at this point, but I'm not. I'm still going to add some whiskers to finish this off, so that will be coming up next, but here I am signing it. All right, here I'm going to finish the whiskers by taking the masking off. Remember, you want to let everything completely dry on your painting but don't get it dry by using a hair dryer, a hair dryer because the hair dryer will make the plastics in the masking stick to your paper permanently. So just wait for your paper to dry and then you can remove the masking. You know when you can remove the masking when pretty much everything behind the masking is done. And uh, for example, for this painting, I've got all her fur as black and dark as I want to get it. There's not any other details that I want to change where the whiskers are, so that means I can go ahead and take them off, take the masking off. And here I'm just using my scrubber very gently because this is, again, the fluid watercolor paper. If you're using Arsh, which you probably are, you can scrub more vigorously, but I'm going to scrub right where the whiskers meet her face. And I'm also going to scrub along the lines of some of the whiskers to thin them down and refine them. And some of them I'm going to use the, uh, the scrubber to just pull some gray over parts of the whiskers. Because as whiskers move and bend in space, they have shadows that come across them. And it makes them look more realistic if they're not all perfectly flat white like my whiskers are now. 
but that's going to change as I speak because I want to make them look a little bit more realistic and like they're curving in space and so I'm going to paint a little bit of T consistency, basically T consistency paint over them, but just whatever paint I have in my brush, I just kind of swish it over parts of the whiskers to kind of give them some more dimension. And you can see already, I mean, they look so much better, I think. I think that makes them look so good. It really sets off the painting, and that is the beauty of jewelry, how fixing those whiskers like that just added so much to the painting. All right, so this is obviously a different painting, but I wanted to show you how I use this little octopus tool. I did take a video of me creating this tool, so if you guys want to see it, let me know. <laughs> but it's kind of an interesting little doohickey to have for different little experiments, and especially if you're doing landscape, I think more so, it would be useful to have it. And it was kind of awkward to hold it because the point was pointing the wrong way for the handle. So it was definitely a different muscle memory than I'm used to using. So it was a little awkward. I had to be really careful and think a lot. But the whiskers came out really interesting. The line isn't all one straight, thin, flat line. It's here, it bumps over the surface and creates a broken line. So it's kind of a more interesting line. So I don't know, I think it's a fun idea to play with. But anyway, that is about it for this tutorial. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful and be sure to subscribe. I upload a new video every week and I will see you guys next week. Do you want to say bye bye kitty? Ow! <laughs> I love you though kitty. Bye you guys.